Hello, everyone. Welcome again. Uh, we are going to talk about the second part of the youth subcultures. I am Dr. Dilsara Fazilova. Welcome. And in this part of the youth subculture, we will be discussing the lifespan of uh, youth uh, deviant subcultures. Let me share my PowerPoint and go from there. So this is about the second part of your reading. So in the first lecture, we talked about the power elite by Mills. So we developed that um, there are a um, group of people who concentrated in the decision-making processes and they represent their own interests first when it comes to making decisions, uh, making decisions, not the mainstream society or not the mass people in society. So then we talked about emergence of youth deviant subcultures in response to some of the societal um, some marginalization, alienation, uh, cultural marginalization or alienation or uh, resisting the laws and regulations of the governments. So at this part of our lecture, we are discussing now what happens to the subcultures as they grow up, as they transition to adulthood. So in our first um, lecture on youth subcultures, we developed that um, subcultures emerge because young people who are not finding their uh, identity or not fitting well in society search for identity. Subcultures offer youth an alternative way to express themselves through uh, clothing, fashion, um, maybe makeup, music, dance, or other ways that can resist dominant cultural expectations. The second one was um, the sense of belonging, that the sense of empowerment within the subculture. Subcultures create tight-knit communities where members share values and cultural practices. They support one another. They, first of all, they feel there are like-minded people with similar interests that empowers them and then provides them sense of belonging. And also they are similar in a way they, they uh, resist mainstream culture or the laws and regulations they are not agree with. So their rebellion and resistance is also shared within the subculture. And as we talked, uh, many subcultures are formed in opposition to societal norms, authority, mainstream culture, that um, laws and regulations that oppress them or marginalize them. So they, they uh, form um, in, oppo in opposition to them. And then therefore they have support system within their subgroups. So then um, how this subcultures affect people's lives as they transition to um, adulthood. Actually, most subcultures emerge as young people transitioning to adulthood as they are trying to find their identity. It's kind of like an experimentation with identity, youth people, young people, the youth, use subcultures to explore different facets of their identity. It can be through music or fashion or lifestyle, different belief systems, something um, different, something they couldn't find in the mainstream society. Also, it is the part of self-development, the subcultural experience is often um, viewed as a stage in developing personal identities. They can try different things. They can, for example, if they weren't having a um, good fit in society and people weren't supporting them, now they have this support system 
the thing is they maybe did not experience it or they could not express or come out. They feel free about that, also feel empowered because of that dif differences. And there are all different durations of how much people uh, participate in the subgroups. We will go through them. Some see subculture participation as temporary, as maybe few years, maybe several years as they were young and transitioning to adulthood. Then while other people, other members uh, see this participation as a lifelong connection or commitment to the subcultures. So um, there are some challenges of maintaining this subcultural identity as people uh, transition to adulthood. There are societal expectations. For example, when they were transitioning from uh, youth to adulthood, there is certain years, several years, perhaps they don't have to uh, do, do certain things. For example, they don't have to get married. They don't have to come up with a solid plan for um, the, prof the profession they want to pursue, or they don't have to have children. They don't have to commit to work. Perhaps those kind of stuff can happen. However, though, adults may face pressure uh, to conform to mainstream norms more than young people, making it harder to maintain uh, their subcultural identity. Also, professional and family responsibilities um, will become on their way eventually, and they have to start uh, balancing work and family life, uh, and that will limit their uh, subcultural activities. Also, there is a stigma in misunderstanding. Adult subculturalists may face judgment and stereotypes for continuing to engage in subcultural practices as now they are considered as adults. There will be different kinds of pressure than young, like young people viewed as like, you're still developing, they're still young, they're still sometimes with like, they are, you know, out of their mind or whatever it is. And then when people are adult, in their 40s, for example, or 50s, the pressure will be different than when young people are in their teens or 20s. So, uh, so there is that kind of pressure. So what happens as subcultures grow up? <clears throat> there will be certainly uh, priorities will shift at this point. Um, as this, the participants of this sub, subgroups um, transition to adulthood uh, and then their um, focus shifts due to responsibilities like work, family, and societal pressures, they slowly, usually they slowly build some type of stable work, some type of stable family, which increases their uh, responsibilities. Also, there's like a two things. Some people totally um, abandon the, the subcultural participation while other groups make adaptations to their priorities, the shifting priorities in subcultural participation. Subcultural continuity means that people somehow manage to um, cope with their lives, that uh, priorities, maybe family responsibilities, job responsibilities, and all of those, and still keep this identity as part of their adult identity. However, it will become somehow less visible or modified that tone it down in fashion or lifestyle. So what we're going to do is we will go through one by one the changes may happen to these subgroups um, and then see, see if we have any um, other questions come up with that. The first continued of values and identity, um, there are two things that 
carrying values forward means that even if external participation fades away, like for example, bikers, they are not participating in putting this leather jackets and, and bike, you know, just participating in biking and going places, doing the things they did before, maybe that part fades away. The values and ideologies from youth subcultures often persist in the individual's life. Like they still might have collection of their stuff and they still might do some of the, the things, the practices and habits in their individual level instead of the group level. Subcultural influence in adult life, people may integrate aspects of their subcultural experience into their adult identity, influencing their career choices, social values, and hobbies. We will take a look at that in a deeper sense right away. So number one, subcultural persistence. Many people who were in the subculture, sorry for the asylum, the, I live close to hospitals, so there is a, often um, that, that kind of voices. Subcultural persistence, many ind individuals carry the values and ethos of their youth subcultures into adulthood. For example, if there are, there are musical groups and they before had this musical uh, nightlife and dances and all this together, groups together and very noisy and, and all this stuff. There may be particular fashion, particular voices, particular stuff, look, whatever it, it can be. And then when they transition to adulthood, they may not have that late night partying but they can still have some groups get together, some members of the group get together and have that element in their life. Or maybe they uh, transition from offline life to online life, maybe express themselves in different ways. For example, someone involved in the punk subculture I brought here might no longer attend concerts, so dress um the part but they may still maintain the anti-authoritarian attitude or DIV ethnic central uh to the pan scene so they can have that element still with them however they don't do that very um very uh, obvious elements of the subculture or or the what they have done before, maybe that part fits away. Subcultural adaptation, some subcultures adapt to adult um, responsibilities. Members may continue participating, but in a ways that accommodate, accommodate their grown up, grown up lives. So in this case, people are not quitting uh, the subcultural participation and they might um, change it to you know, smaller groups to still practice it. Actually, I mentioned in the other one, maybe for the family-friendly daytime concerts, they can participate. They can still love the stuff they have and do in some smaller scale things. However, they're kind of disconnected from the large dysnoise. Uh, participation. Um, subcultural softening, and I, I really like this part because, you know, it's just uh, without accepting, rejecting, or anything, their fashion may um, soften just because of their responsibility as a mother or father or working in some kind of professional environment. They cannot where or do what they have done before now it softens they they may still have some elements of them in in a way that it's acceptable to the mainstream society however they kind of soften the edges of their subculture to continue participating in this the responsibilities of their families and work and other things and take 
part in mainstream society. You can understand it as that, you know, having some elements of the subculture, however, fitting in the mainstream culture in a way like you're deviant a little bit, however, you're okay. So you're not too deviant to push away, but you're still a little bit deviant. It's acceptable deviance. <laughs> you can you can put that way. So um, the softening often happens as they integrate to mainstream society, balancing sub subcultural values with the demand of their careers, family, or social expectations. So it's written down for you, and I explained how this happens. <clears throat> So the internal commitment to the subculture still exists. exists. However, all this responsibility is and all this uh, taking part in mainstream society kind of softens the ages of the subculture and the person's views on subculture perhaps changes also how they carry themselves also changes. Some subcultural participants, members, whatever their subculture is about, they can carry that into their um, adult life as a professional job. For example, people from skateboarding, hip hop, or golf cultures might become entrepreneurs, musicians, fashion designers, writers, and especially if they're a writer and writing about their this group, and that can be very interesting, I think. Um, some of the, the members of subculture, actually recently I told somebody that they should not pursue education in master's degree and PhD and do research on the subculture. Those kind of stuff are very um, interesting and great because somehow they continue that and also increase or deepen their uh, interests in a way that is part of mainstream society. And now it's accepted. That's just a professional part of their lives, especially when it's kind of like a, uh, adapted through sports or music or entrepreneurship or writing is kind of interesting and, and deviant in a way now society encourages and supports and and celebrates it so now it's a different kind of uh, participation i think legacy and, and tradition some of the members of subcultures will become that educators of the subculture so now probably they are not really participating in a way they did before but they are now gatekeepers that they teach people, tell people, they have this uh, element of passing the subculture to a next generation. So uh, in this way, subcultures can become multi-generational with older participants playing an active role in shaping its future. So that that is a very interesting and important part of uh, membership in a subculture. If Older members of subculture teaching youngers, uh, younger people, and then kind of keeping the tradition is kind of like a, a le legacy of the subculture is continuing. It's becoming multi generational, or maybe sometimes it can become mainstream, right? So some individuals move away from their subculture because of their family priorities, careers, changing ideas, changing mindsets and perspectives. Sometimes they will become just like nothing happened before they become normal. Um, the, the people who are accepting the norms of the mainstream society, um, However, the experience and values gained through their, um, through their time in the subculture often continues to influence their adult identities and choices, even if they're outward participation. It's like, it's just, for example, 
if uh, play the rock music. Let's say they play the rock music. They had all this specific kind of clothing, specific kind of uh, concerts and friends and drinking, whatever it was, that might fade and then still might they might have their love towards uh, rock music and they might have some guitars in their home. Then they might listen to that music. They just keep in a way that they, they have still the experience and interests. However, they're totally drift away from subculture altogether. Um, as a conclusion, um, subcultures have a lifespan. Uh, certainly, the many, many people who are starting their participation in subculture starts with they're, when they are young, when they are young adolescents, they are just transitioning to adult life. That's when they will become, um, they will become the people who wants to find their identity. They want to find the sense of belonging. They want the empowerment from a group. That's when they need to find who they are, right? Um, so that starts from there and it can change over the span of this youth transitioning to adulthood. And this transformation can also mean that it's not a rejection, but they are adapting to a societal norm sometimes. Sometimes they are accepting their responsibilities as an adult. Sometimes they are keeping that interest, but kind of drifting away from the subcultural participation. So many, many different things can happen in the lifespan of the subculture. Uh, reflection on modern subcultures, the fluid nature of modern subcultures allows for more flexibility in how individuals engage with them over time. And what we are talking here is now this existence of online groups and online communities and then all different kinds of way to engage with one another is also changing how the subcultural groups can uh, engage and participate in their subculture through media and social media and other ways. So kind of like a, it's just a, everything's changing, so do subcultures. So there are some questions for reflection. How do you think subcultural identity changes with age? That's what we explored today. Can someone maintain their subcultural identity while adapting to the responsibilities of adulthood? And how are there specific subcultures you believe allow for easier transition into adult, adult life? So these are some of the questions to reflect on to see if you understand the lecture well and or your um, reading well. And I will see you in our next lectures. Thank you.